I'm a Baptist. I don't go to mass. Zico. Well, how'd you get there before I came along? We walk every Sunday, now we got you. Now, damn it! <gasps> you ain't got me. Good night. He was a legend. He was a pioneer. Sidney Poitier was a groundbreaking performer, truly in a class all his own. A few years ago, we asked Leslie Stahl to talk with the Oscar-winning actor. We could think of no better remembrance than their conversation. You hang on to me, Joker, the best way you can. We're getting out of here. Sidney Poitier's life has been a series of firsts. In 1959, he was the first black man nominated for an Oscar as Best Actor for his role of an escaped convict alongside Tony Curtis. Kiss me again. He was the first black man to kiss a white woman in a movie. Got the scoot, he has sent me a big, strong man. He didn't say anything to me about sending me any place. I was just passing by. And when he won the Best Actor Oscar in 1964, it is a long journey to this moment. He was not only the first black actor to do so, he remained the only one till 2002. After starring in over 50 movies, Poitier says his career choices were less about being first and more about the image of his characters. You wouldn't play anybody who was immoral? Cruel. No. No? No. Uh, if you go through my career, you'll find that I didn't. I didn't ever. His typical character was dignified, proud, and ethical. Well, you're pretty sure of yourself, ain't you, Virgil? Virgil, that's a funny name for a boy that comes from Philadelphia. What do they call you up there? They call me Mr. Tibbs. Take Virgil Tibbs, a Philadelphia homicide detective who reluctantly helps a small town police chief in Mississippi, played by Rod Steiger, solve a murder. Why'd you two come here? To ask you about Mr. Colbert. But before signing on to play the role, Poitier asked the movie studio for a major script change to this scene. Was Mr. Colbert ever in this greenhouse, say last night about midnight? I said, if he slaps me, I'm going to slap him back. You will put on paper that the studio agrees that the film will be shown nowhere in the world with me standing there taking the slap. God, you had this written into the contract? That's right. You saw it. I saw it. Well, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. And of course, it is one of the great, great moments in all a film, all a film when you slap him back. Yes. I knew that I would have been insulting every black person in the world. The youngest of seven children, Sidney was born three months premature while his Bahamian parents were in Miami to sell tomatoes. Uncertain whether he would survive, his dad purchased a tiny casket while his mother consulted a palm reader. The lady took her hand and started speaking to my mother. And she said, don't worry about your son. He will survive. He will walk with kings. Sidney lived in the Bahamas until the age of 15, when his parents, afraid he was on a path to delinquency, sent him back to Miami to live with his older brother. But at 16, Sidney left for New York where he tried his hand at acting, even though he had had only two years of schooling. Okay, here's my big question. You couldn't read. You had a very thick Bahamian accent. I did. And you decide to try and become an actor? I did. Why didn't you go that route? It kind of makes no sense. I had no way of knowing that there is a madness to what I'm trying to do. After a disastrous audition with the American Negro Theater, where Poitier could barely read the script, 
an act of kindness at his job as a dishwasher changed his life. One of the waiters, a Jewish guy, elderly man, I had a, 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 a newspaper and he walked over to me and he looked at me and he said, what's new in the paper? And I looked up at this man and I said to him, I can't tell you what's up in the paper. I said, because I can't read very well. He said, let me ask you something. Would you like me to read with you? Wow. Uh, I said to him, yes if you like. Now let me tell you something. Every night. Every night. The place is closed. Everyone's gone. And he sat there with me. Week after week after week. I learn a lot, a lot. And then things began to happen. Like landing an acting apprenticeship with the very same theater company that had laughed him out of his audition. There, Poitier learned alongside actors like Ruby Dee, Ossie Davis, and Harry Belafonte. What's a big idea? What are you going to do now? Look, I'm trying to help your brother. Why don't you just shut up? You watch yourself, black boy. Watch how you talk to me. Just shut up. And then in 1950, he was cast in his first starring role in a movie, In No Way Out. Okay, Sambo. This is it. He played a doctor facing overt racism from a prisoner, played by Richard Widmark. Please help me. No. Look, he's sick. He's crazy. He's everything you said. But I can't kill a man just because he hates me. From the beginning of his career, Poitier insisted that he portray men who were upright, well-educated, and often stronger of character than the white people around him. I did not go into the film business to be symbolized as someone else's vision of me. If the screen does not make room for me in the structure of their screenplay, I'd step back. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. In 1967, Sidney Poitier was among the top 10 Hollywood money makers. All right, take your seat. And a top 10 leading man. In that one year alone, he starred in To Sir With Love. You take care. In the heat yeah. of the night. Mom. And guess who's coming to dinner? This is John. With Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn. Doc, doc, Dr. Prentice, I'm so pleased to meet you. I'm pleased to meet you, Mrs. Drayton. But that year, he began to face criticism from some in the African-American community who labeled him an Uncle Tom for the purity of his roles. And it didn't hurt you? It hurt me for what? I just simply say, I live by a certain code. I have to have a certain amount of decency in my behavioral pattern. I have to have that. Mongo Slay from New York, huh? That's right. In the 1970s, Poitier turned to directing. And surprisingly, the actor who so often personified elegance, grace, and earnestness... Give me a light. He wants a light. ...directed comedies with slapstick. That doesn't... Don't... Oh, shit! In the 1980s, he turned to writing books, producing three autobiographies. And when we spoke in 2013, Sidney Poitier, then 86 yes. years old, had just written a novel. I was not intending to make an impression. I was finding release for myself within myself. I was looking for who I am at this point in my life. Did you find out? Somewhat, yes. Who are you? 
<clears throat> I'm a good person. <clears throat> 